What's up you guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this super awesome pallet flag. Uh, this has got to be one of my favorite flags I've done so far. I'm super happy with how it turned out, but what are we waiting for? Let's get started. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is take my hammer and flat bar and just get all this wood separated and pull all the nails and uh, just get it all separated and organized so that we can work with it. All right, so now that we got these all separated, uh, the next thing that I'm gonna do is go ahead and rip these guys at an inch and a half. And uh, what we're gonna do is just try and get 13 uh, stripes out of these. So as you can see this one, uh, I might be able to use half of it. Uh, I don't know if all pallets are the same exactly, but um, for most of these, we should be able to get two out of them. So hopefully you have enough decent ones some of these are not very uh, user friendly, but we're just gonna go ahead and do our best to get 13 stripes out of these. And then for these guys over here, I'm just gonna take uh, two of them and I'm gonna rip four one inch strips. Uh, so I'll be able to get three out of one and then I'll have to use another one to get one more. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and rip all of those. We got 13 at an inch and a half and four at one inch. And then once we get those cut, then we'll go ahead and uh, cut them down to the right length. All right, so now that we got all of our wood cut, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the inch and a half strips at 37 inches. And then um, as you can see, some of these, you know, they were snapped and I think most of this will get cut off, but some of these look a little rough, but I think that's just gonna give it a cool uh, look to it. Um, with pallet wood, you can't really be too picky about how your wood is gonna look. And then some of these, I uh, didn't even make it through the saw because they were just so, you know, they're they're just pinching really hard and it was just not really working out so um but i did end up with enough i think i have 14 so i'll have one extra and uh when you're cutting these uh, just make sure you quickly look at it and like this for instance when i got this crack right here i'm just gonna um obviously just cut do your best even if you have to center your uh even if you have to like center your cut a little bit and you know, just to cut off an end on one part and then cut off the other end, just to get rid of some of like the nastier pieces or pieces that were cracked and whatnot. Um, so just think about that before you cut them, just make sure you're cutting the right side off and you're not left with a worse side. And then for my one inch pieces, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut those at 18 and three quarters and those will be for our backer pieces. So we're gonna go ahead and get all these cut and we will go on from there. All right, so now we got everything cut. Um, I realized that you only need to rip two of the longer ones at one inch because you are able to get uh, two pieces out of each one. And then I also kept these uh, these cutoff pieces that are about uh, five and a half inches. And I'll just be using those uh, to secure my hangers on the back. And then for my boards, like I said, I got 14 of them. And uh, next up, we can just go ahead and start torching them. Uh, if you do want to sand yours down, to try and give it a more consistent finish you could do that i'm just gonna go ahead and keep mine as they are just to kind of give it a more rustic look to it and then um i kept i kept a lot of the nail holes also just to kind of add that to the rustic look but it's definitely just a personal preference so whatever you like and now we can just go ahead and get all these torched all right so to torch these i'm just gonna be using this burns matic propane torch with the uh 
little nozzle on the end of it. And uh, you can burn these pretty much just however you want to. Uh, it's just a personal preference, but I'll just go ahead and quickly show you how I'm gonna burn mine. Uh, I think for these ones, I'm going to try, I'm gonna try burn it a little bit darker around the edges and then burn it lighter in the middle. Um, I, don't, I don't know if that'll work out very well, but we're just gonna go ahead and try it. So get this turned on. And uh, be very careful, just don't burn your house down or set your garage on fire or anything like that. Alright, so that is the look that I'm going to try go for. And then I went ahead and added some burn just next to the like the nail holes. And like I said, I'm gonna try to do a, a rustic look, but uh, that is just kind of what I'm going for. So we're gonna go ahead and get the rest of these burned and we'll go from there. All right, now we got them all torched. Um, and also, I went ahead and torched each of the ends while I was doing that, just so that the ends uh, stay consistent with the rest of the look. And uh, now what I'm gonna do is kinda get mine laid out the way I want them to be on the flag. So I think I'm gonna like stagger, cause I have, I have nail holes on the end of each board, but only one side of the board has them, so I think I'm gonna stagger those back and forth. And then, um, as you can see, they have like different grain patterns, so I might just, you know, stagger those also. As you can see, this one's wavy and this one's more straight. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kinda get mine sorted out in a pattern that I like. And then um, once we get those sorted out, then we will be ready to stain. All right, so that is how I'm going to lay out the boards for my flag. And then um, to stain them, I'll just be using uh, just a rag. And then uh, for my blue, I'll be using Varathane water-based wood stain. And this one is tinted in uh, navy blue. I believe they have a Minwax version of this, which is like true blue. And Minwax is from Lowe's and Varathane is from Home Depot. Uh, for the red, this will be Minwax water-based wood stain. And this one is tinted in scarlet. And then I just have some white stain here also. This is Varathin water-based wood stain from Home Depot, and this is just uh, white. I have not yet been able to find a red at Home Depot, or from what I've seen, there was not a red that matches the scarlet, so you might have to get your scarlet from Lowe's, but uh, that's just what I found. And then uh, for each board, I'm just gonna stain the faces, the edges, and then I'm also gonna stain the top and the bottom just to give it all a consistent look. And then in case when I line it up, if there's any, any inconsistencies, you'll see stain and it won't be bare wood. And then I will go ahead and show you real quick how I'm going to get the line for the union. All right, so for the union, that'll be the top seven stripes. And uh, what I'm going to do is just measure 14 and three quarter inches over. I'm going to make a tiny little mark right there. And then I'm just going to take my square and just put it, uh, line it right up against that mark. And then I'm just going to take a uh, utility blade. The ones I got are just uh, Home Depot brand heavy duty utility blades. So I'm gonna grab one of them and then make sure it's lined up on my mark. And then I'm just gonna set my blade right along my square. And just tap it in just like that. And you just wanna tap it in just enough so that it goes through the surface. Um, so it's not very deep, but you just want it um, pretty much just to be a, a straight line for a stain blocker. And as long as it goes through just a little bit, you should be fine. So that will be for the top seven stripes. And then um, and then obviously it'll start red at the top and then it will transition down. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of those put in for my union and then I'm going to start staining. Uh, the darker that you burn your wood, the darker it will look with the stain. So if you didn't do as dark of a burn, it might not look as dark as mine. Uh, but you could just go ahead and do as many coats as you think. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and stain mine. And if I think they need a second coat, then I'll just go ahead and give them a second coat. 
But uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and get the rest of these stained and uh, we'll see how she looks. All right, so I've given these some time to dry, and uh, let me just go ahead and pull off one of these razors to show you what it looks like. Just like that, and as you can see, gives it a really nice clean line. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull all the other razors out, and then um, I'm just gonna get it up onto the table, and we can get ready to assemble it all together. All right, so I got it up on my table now, and I'm just gonna go ahead and completely flip the flag over. All right, now that I got it flipped over, uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a mark on the bottom stripe and the top stripe. And I'm going to make one at uh, one inches and 14 inches. And that'll be on the top and the bottom. And I will be doing that on both sides. All right, and now that I got those uh, marked out on top and bottom and on both sides, uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is just take my nailer that I'm going to be using and I just got inch and a quarter nails in it and this is an 18 gauge brad nailer. And then what I'm going to do real quick is just, I just have this test piece right here and it's just the same thickness of uh, my backer and of the face and I'm just going to put a couple nails through it just to make sure that it is the right, um, just to make sure that my, uh, my depth isn't set too deep. So uh, as you can see, nothing, I went, I, these are just going through the face of it, but I just wanna make sure that nothing's gonna come through the face just to make sure it's not shooting them in too deep. Um, just because the nails um, are pretty long compared to how much space we got. So we just wanna make sure that um, we don't have any nails coming out the face. So uh, that right there should be good. So just make sure yours is also set to the right depth so that you do not have to worry about that. And now we can start assembling it. All right, so the way that I'm gonna put this together, I'm just gonna take these two 24 inch bar clamps and I'm gonna start on the right side and I'm just gonna make sure that it is lined up as good as possible. Um, all these are all lined up tight, straight up and down the best I can. And then I'm gonna take one of my backer strips and then I'm just gonna line it up with my mark on the top and on the bottom. And then before I do that, I'm actually just gonna run a quick bead of glue down the back of this. And I'll just help to keep this together just a little bit better. And then I'm just gonna line that up on the top and the bottom, and then just kind of center it between them as best I can. And then I'm gonna take my clamp, and I'm just gonna go ahead and get these boards all tight together. Now I don't need them to be super tight, but I just want them pretty much just all touching. And again, I wanna check and make sure that they're all straight. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and tack in two nails per board, or per stripe. And then now I'm just gonna do the same thing uh, for my next one. It will go on the inside of those marks and then on these other sides, it will also go on the inside of the marks. And then um, now that this is nailed, I'll just pull this clamp off and put it right here and then maybe put this clamp right here. And then I'll just be gluing the backs and then putting two nails per stripe. All right, now that we got all those put on, uh, now I'm just gonna grab my, my two shorter uh, pieces that I had, and I'm just going to be putting them uh, just right along with this top stripe, and then I'm just gonna jam them up against either side, and then I'll be using those for my hangers. All right, and that is what it looks like all put together. And the next thing that we can do is move on to the union. So for the union, I'll just be using this uh, stencil right here. 
I can go ahead and link this in the description if you'd like to order it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and tape this in the right spot. And then once it's taped, I'll just take a pencil and I'm just gonna go through and outline all the stars. And then from there, we will be ready to carve it. All right, so I went ahead and got these all outlined. So there you can see. And now we're gonna start carving them. So I just got a Dremel 3000 with a flex shaft attached to it. And I got a dust blower on the end with a 106 uh, wood engraving tip. So, oh, I'm sorry, it's actually the 105 that's on there right now. So it would be that one right there. And that is the 106. So the 105 is a smaller one and I will use that to outline the stars. And then I will be switching to the 106 when I'm finished outlining and I'll use that one to carve out the middles. And then uh, when I carve them, um, I just try and just plant my palm in one place and then I just try and um, just kind of swivel back and forth and then, you know, just go nice and slow. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you real quick what it looks like. Uh, I put the Dremel on full speed when I'm doing this. All right, so now that I got those all carved out, um, if you like the look of it just like that, then you can just leave it like that. But um, I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly add some white stain in the stars just to give them a little bit of a whiter look. So I just got this pack of fine paint brushes and then I'm just gonna quickly go through and uh, add some stain to them. So what I'm gonna do is just get a nice glob of it on the end of my brush. And then I'm just gonna kind of work it around in there. And then if I get any on the blue, I'll just go through after and just touch it up with the uh, with the blue stain. And then it doesn't have to be super perfect. Just get it as close as you can. Uh, it is a little bit time consuming, but, and then if you would like, you could also just use paint for this as well. All right, so something like that. So it'll it'll dry up even a little bit darker than that but I think overall it will give it a little bit of a better look. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get the rest of these stained up. All right, so now that we got those star stained, uh, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly flip it over and then I'm going to get my hangers put on the back. So I just got these large sawtooth hangers and then I'm just going to put them on each of these little pieces of wood right here on either side. And then I'll just center them on the wood and then I'll just go an inch and three quarter from the inside and then that's where I'll put the first screw and then I'll just put the other one wherever it lies but I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly get these thrown on
All right, so now as you can see, we got those put on there. So the last thing we have left to do is to just seal it. So uh, the way I'm gonna do mine is I'm gonna use uh, this stuff to seal the back just because there's a lot of edges and stuff so the spray will make it easier. And then that'll be just to, just to give it some protection on the back. Um, and for the front, I'm actually gonna try this stuff out. Uh, I've never used it before. Uh, we just had some leftover from a job we were doing, so um, I figured I would give it a try and then we can see how it looks. Um, if you wanted to just use this sealer on the front and the back, uh, I just did this, this little flag uh, with this one. So you can get an idea of how that one looks. It, I think it turned out really good. It's got a really nice shine to it, a really nice gloss. Otherwise, the uh, the Rust-Oleum Crystal Clear Enamel is a, is a spray stain that I've used a lot and that'll work just fine too, pretty much just whatever you wanna use, but I was just gonna let you know what I was gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this sealed up and then I'll show you guys how it turns out using this stuff and uh, we'll see how she looks. All right, now the sealer has had some time to dry up, so you can see what that looks like. Um, once it's dry, I think it turned out really good. I'm really happy with, with how this one looks. So, uh, Like always, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below, and I will do my best to answer them. Uh, I'll go ahead and link everything in the description that I used to make this if you'd like to order anything. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and uh, also check me out on Instagram. I'd love to hear any video recommendations that you guys might have for me. Thank you guys so much for watching, and good luck with the project. Bye.